What's cooking, Zoomers? I know you like linear equations. They're not all weird and curving like these Eldritch nightmares. But today, I'm here to change that with this video. The entire Scalars are just numbers. They exist by themselves in the real world with a unit of measurement, such as 10 centimeters, 800 Robux, five chicken jockey. <laughs> These are all scalars. They can also be used as the coefficient of a vector. Let's put a random point on this plane. Now, if we draw an arrow from the origin, or we'll center, to that point, we get our magnitude immediately because it's just the length of this line. We can find the length with a simple trick using the distance in the x and the distance in the y as the sides of the triangle. And if we chuck them in some square brackets like this, and we write a variable with an arrow over it, that is the vector. Now, for direction, depending on which quadrant the vector is in, we'll just have, once again, basic trick applied to figure out the anti-clockwise angle angle from the x-axis, or the real axis, if working with complex numbers. Let's say little Timmy goes from his house to watch the Minecraft movie at his local cinema. Because the cinema is in the second quadrant, the arctan of the distance to the north divided by the distance to the west is a negative number, because it's the angle between it and the negative axis. So to get this kind of thing going on, we have to add it by 180 degrees. And there is our correct angle. Yeah, but what about financial freedom? Escaping the matrix. Matrices mean more than one matrix, where a matrix is just a grid or array of values. We can use matrices to do sort of helpful yet tedious calculations to solve systems of equations. Imagine you were in a test and you were given this graph right here. Generally, you would just try some elimination or substitution approach to solve for the unknowns, and that's perfectly reasonable. But because your teacher wrote linear algebra at the top of the page, we're gonna have to use some things this guy made up. Gaussian elimination along with rho echelon form. These things aren't that deep. Basically, the numbers in the matrix, column by column, are just the coefficients of the unknowns, and the rightmost value of each row is just what the equation is equal to. The point of doing a series of adding, subtracting, basically just messing around with the equations is to make the bottom left three values, these ones here, equal to zero. We do this so that the bottom row just has one coefficient that isn't zero, the coefficient of z, and so we can automatically have one of the solutions. And so, by making all of these coefficients 1 through some basic arithmetic, we get the row echelon form, allowing us to directly substitute and solve this system pretty easily. Now that we've talked about what these things are, how do you use them? Take little Timmy's trajectory vector to the movie theater, and the one to his friend's house where his buddy Jericamo is pirating it instead. And let's find the angle between said vectors. The way to do this is by multiplying them because the dot product of the vectors is equal to the product of the magnitudes times by the cos of the angle. What is a dot product, bro? Literally just multiply the rows and add the products. An angle is acute if the dot product is greater than zero, 90 degrees if it's equal to zero, and obtuse if it's less than zero. Now, because the dot product is negative, we know that the angle is greater than 90 degrees. Now we can set negative one equal to square root five times square root 10, or negative one equals square root 50 times cos theta. Rearrange and we have theta equals r cos of negative one divided by square root 50 equals 98.13 degrees, which is greater than 90. But what if we wanted to rotate a vector by exactly 90 degrees? Degrees. When we rotate this vector, we want its length to stay the same, the magnitude, but change its direction. When we multiply a 2 row or 2D vector by another one, you always get a scalar that is 1D. Now because we want another vector that is 2D after the transformation, we must be multiplying it by a matrix that is 2 by 2 to maintain the 2. What? Anyhow, a matrix is a rotation matrix if the dot product of the columns are equal to zero, meaning they are orthogonal or perpendicular. The magnitudes of the columns are equal to one, and the difference between the cross multiplication products is also equal to one. Turns out, the Pythagorean identity meets the criteria exactly. As we want to rotate by 90 degrees, let's put 90 degrees in the matrix. If we evaluate these, then we just have one, zero, zero, negative one. Great. Now what? Well, Paul Jericamo got a virus from the pirating website, so the boys gotta apply a quick rotation matrix transformation to their vector and start heading to Brilliant.org, the sponsor of today's video. The truth is, 
I don't like learning. Okay, that's a complete lie. I don't like having to use PowerPoints and PDF documents from 2003 to learn new things in math and science. That's why Brilliant is a far superior in the realm of breaking down advanced content into manageable sizes that can be learnt whenever, wherever, from your phone, laptop, tablet, you name it. Some of their latest banger courses include visual algebra, scientific thinking, circuits, exploring data visually, and Brilliant is constantly adding new lessons and partnering with big education channels to make unique and highly interesting courses, such as Kurzgesagt's Beyond the Nutshell. The reason why Brilliant is so effective for little Timmy here is because the brain rot withdrawals require him an interactive space, where problem-solving skills are built as fast as he can scroll. What? Okay, maybe not that fast, but if you want to try everything that Brilliant has to offer for a full free 30 days, use my link brilliant.org slash findway, or use the QR code on the screen now, and you'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Back to the rotation matrix, we gotta do our dot product of their vector and the matrix. And we get two numbers like so. This new vector is 90 degrees rotated from the original. You guys like making me explain painful concepts. That's why the next thing we're gonna look at are images of translation. Not actual photographs, rather the span of the columns of a transformation matrix. Well, we know what a transformation matrix is, but what is span? Let's say we are transforming a vector from R3 to R4 i.e. taking a 3D vector and putting it into 4D space by manipulating the values of the vector and adding a 4D component. Now that sounds more complicated than it actually is, because if we have the expressions that determine the output of the transformation like this, then we can easily find the image. What we have to do is substitute something called the standard basis vectors. Because we are dealing with 3D vectors, we need three standard basis vectors. So basically we would be substituting 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1 into the transformation, and the three transform vectors become the columns of the transformation matrix. These columns make up the span, but what does that actually tell you? Well, if you multiply the first column by your first value of the vector you're transforming, the second column by the second value, and the third by the third value, you will get your transformed vectors. This allows us to see all of the possible vectors that can be made in the codomain of R4 by transforming the R3 vectors. An identity matrix is basically like the number one in terms of multiplication. It doesn't do anything when you multiply and therefore it's completely useless. That's fantastic, but we're here to learn about it anyways. Because multiplying a matrix by a matrix transforms the input matrix, the transformation is mapping, but from R3 to R3 if the matrix is 3D. It doesn't change, as the domain of R3 is the same as the codomain of R3. All outputs are possible. This makes sense, because any input can be put in, and the output is the same as the input. That basically is all there is to know about them. If the matrix is called A, and the vector is X, then AX equals X upon taking the dot product of A and X. So we know inverse functions eliminate the effect that functions have on the input. It's literally the same for transformations, because transformations basically are functions, but with multiple inputs. There is an important thing to know about matrices which we haven't talked about yet, and that is the determinant. Now, these only apply to square matrices, those with the same amount of rows as columns, but it allows us to identify three pretty interesting things. The first usage is to see whether it has an inverse or not, just like functions. If the determinant doesn't equal zero, it means it can be inversed. Cool. Let's find the determinant of this matrix A equals 2, 3, 7, 9. Cross multiply starting from the top left to the bottom right, and then subtract that from the other product. 2 times 9 minus 3 times 7 equals negative 3. Great, so now we know it has an inverse. We also know that the image is the whole codomain. That is, any possible vector of R4 can be created by the transformation of R3. Another thing is for solving for the original matrix that has been transformed by A. If AX equals B, then X equals the inverse A of B. It has a solution when the determinant of A doesn't equal zero. However, if it did, then it could have no solutions or infinitely many. Linear algebra. Linear algebra. We've talked about some pretty crazy stuff involving vectors, matrices, linear transformations, and this is only scratching the surface. Now I know I post only once like every two months, but making these videos is tedious. Surprisingly, I am an actual person that has many other commitments, and over time I have lost the original motivation, the, the original spark that prompted me to make these videos. That's why I'm taking a break. Now I know that we literally just hit 50,000 subscribers, which I am super thrilled about, 
but I have to dip. Could be a year, but I will come back. I always, I always come, come back. back. <laughs> Join the Discord server, by the way. I'm still active there.